All right, it's tornado season, and, and when we talk tornadoes, we talk about seeking shelter. As we are in the colder months, sometimes we're talking about the storms that are producing EF0, EF1 type tornadoes. Those are the ones pretty much a hallway is going to do. But as we get later into the season and we get on into March and April, and if we get a higher risk for severe weather, you're going to want to know exactly where to go in different situations. So as far as a regular house, this is a slab home here. As far as where the safest place is going to be, typically it's going to be the smallest room in the house, and that would be this closet here. Of course, your bathroom will be OK as long as it doesn't have windows on this exterior wall. So overall, the safer locations here are in green, the hallway, the stairs, but by far the smaller the room, uh, the safer you're going to be. You have to avoid the windows. Avoid the doors. Keep in mind this garage here. The garage door is most likely going to fail and the roof on that side of the house is going to go completely off if you get a direct hit. And, and also keep in mind we could be talking about just trees falling on your home as well. If you're in the center part of your home and we're talking winds 80, even straight line winds, uh, the trees will fall on the home, but these interior walls are going to support the weight of that tree. Cover yourself with blankets or a mattress for protection. Again, you're trying to protect yourself from flying debris. Definitely the deck outdoors. You don't want to be there. The basement in this particular home is going to be the safest place. But as we'll discuss here in a few uh, few seconds, the basement, you have other things to consider, especially what's above you in the basement. So here's some other other safety tips for you. Mobile home. This is probably the most vulnerable uh, location to be in because the wind can actually blow the skirts off the bottom of the mobile home and then there's nothing between uh, the bottom of that mobile home and the ground but the wind coming through and it's like an airplane wing. So you need to plan ahead. You need to leave your mobile home and in some cases you may only have 30 minutes time and if, if it's 15 minutes sometimes that's just not enough. So you need to be pretty much the meteorologist if you're in charge of your home. You have a mobile home. You have to leave that mobile home. Uh, again, your home could become airborne. You need to find adequate shelter. Maybe you have a, a detached garage that has a safer place to be. A lot of a lot of apartments going up here in the Huntsville metro area and all over North Alabama. You need to get to the lowest level. Keep in mind the wind increases with height and the same thing holds true with a tornado. You need to find an enclosed small room with no windows. Avoid large rooms because as, as we talked about, the small rooms hold more weight. They're more stable. An interior sta stairwell is good. Get underneath that. You want to stay off of the elevator if there's an elevator in your apartment. Say you're at a local business. Sometimes you can get in those walk in coolers. Uh, sometimes uh, they'll have like if you're at a Home Depot or a Lowe's, they'll have a safety plan or a Walmart. I know when I worked at Walmart, there was one particular area they had everyone go. Uh, you want to find get to the lowest level of that business. Find an enclosed small room with no windows. Avoid the larger rooms. Of course, the interior stairwell is a good idea. Again, once here, stay off of the elevator. Again, typically local businesses will have that plan and they'll put that in effect. If you have a basement, I mentioned this earlier, uh, this one here is a walkout basement, so you want to be a far, as far away from that walkout as you possibly can. You want to get under something sturdy. You want to put on a helmet maybe, protect your head. You're wanting to protect your head in all these situations and more importantly, the back of your neck. Uh, this is probably the most vulnerable part and vulnerable Blunt force trauma is, is the most uh, uh, fatal thing you can have with a tornado. Again, most tornado deaths are from people being flown and uh, thrown across rooms and blunt force trauma. So keep that in mind. So cover your head and neck. Don't get below any heavy objects like say you've got a chimney a fireplace upstairs. Keep in mind that those bricks are going to crumble and they could crumble down into the basement. And also that home could be taken off of its foundation. So you want to get into the northeast side typically of that basement because the storms are moving from the, the more violent storms are moving from the southwest to the northeast. So if it shifts your home, your home is still on top of you. Uh, appliances, refrigerators, things like that upstairs. Again, all those could fall through the floor. If you've got a crawl space, I have my myself now have a crawl space home. Uh, you want to find the smallest room, no windows. So you're probably safer above in some situations with these crawl spaces. Again, that interior hall or closet is going to protect you as well. 
well. Prepare for falling debris and foundations can crumble. If you maybe have an older home, if this if the tornado comes through and it twists the home, maybe it's not going to take the entire home, but it twists the home on its foundation. It can crumble and it can collapse in that fashion as well. Uh, last but not least, certainly many of you may be stuck in a vehicle. By all means, avoid these overpasses. They act like a wind tunnel. The wind actually accelerates when you get into the overpass. Find shelter if possible. If the tornado is imminent, again, you want to be listening to the radio uh, when it comes to these tornado. When storms are threatening, make sure you've got the radio on. You want to pull to the side of the road if it's imminent. You're watching the tree line here as the storm is, is moving in. You keep your seatbelt on, you duck below the windows and cover your head or neck. So again, the airbag, the idea here is cars with airbags that may be a better protection for you. So again, those are some weather safety tips. As far as if you're in the polygon, you're in a tornado warning, here's some information that may be helpful. If you're about 30 to 40 minutes within the path, because typically when we get these supercell storms, we're going to have these long extended storms tracks. You've got to leave your mobile home. Again, this is 30 to 45 minute heads up. Be prepared to seek shelter. Make sure your phone is charged. Arrange your safe place. I know when I was a kid, I was the one in charge of gathering the blankets and you know keeping up to date again radio partners will have information as well prepare to lose power down the road find your flashlight what time of day is it if you lose power at night if it's an outbreak of severe weather you may not have power for several hours if the tornado is imminent you want to brace for impact Signs the tornado may be imminent moving in, the lightning intensity may increase. We've seen uh, research show that there's what's called a lightning jump. The lightning intensity really ramps up ahead of a developing tornado. Hail, quarter size and larger will be possible with these bigger storms. You're going to hear what sounds like a jet engine roar. Some people refer to it as a train, but I myself, I've heard this with hurricanes. As the wind starts to increase, you'll hear this roar from a distance. Blue power flashes in the sky. That'll be transformers flashing, and that's an indication that something is blowing, at least bouncing the power lines and causing the arcing here and blowing transformers. Your power goes out. That's another indication. So have multiple ways to continue to receive warnings because when we get outbreaks of severe weather, we can have multiple rounds of severe thunderstorms. If it gets even more dangerous than that, you've got a large tornado approaching a heavily populated area. You'll get from the National Weather Service what's called a tornado emergency. This is an extremely dangerous, life-threatening situation. It's a rare situation, so we never take these lightly. When you hear us saying tornado emergency, it means this storm means business and you need to be seeking shelter as quickly as you can. It's for a strong or violent tornado. Significant and widespread damage is expected. Expect large flying debris. And in some cases, you may not be directly in the path. You may be 30 miles upstream from the storm and you may have shingles and boards falling from the tornado. So those are other things you need to be aware of. Damage within the tornado inflow. So again, the tornado may not. That's why we don't exactly track the tornado in some of these situations because we realize uh, very similar to, to the Tuscaloosa tornado. I was down there and looked at the, the debris field, there were trees completely down with a hundred mile an hour wind going into that tornado. And I've seen similar damage from other tornadoes here in North Alabama as well. And then again, debris is going to be lofted several miles. As I mentioned earlier, April 27th, we had that storm that was hitting Hackleburg, the tornado there. The debris was falling uh, in Limestone County well ahead of that. So again, hopefully these safety tips will help you and your family stay safe during this severe weather season. And of course, you can always keep it tuned right here. Have multiple ways, weather radio, WAFF channel 48, and our first alert weather app. You can download that today. It's free.